The world can be a really weird place. And when you're driving alone in your car at night, the weirdest and scariest things can happen. Tonight on The Infiltrators Scary Stories, 17 Driving Alone at Night Stories. If you're listening to this on YouTube, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and make sure you have notifications turned on. And now, 17 creepy driving alone at night stories on The Infiltrator's Scary Stories. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your own podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in a podcast in one place download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today number one the trap i had pulled over one night to fuss at my two young children a car pulled up beside me and told me there had been a wreck over the next hill and traffic was stopped They suggested that I take a side road that detours the wreck. I thanked them, and they left. I decided not to take the road, because I'm from the country and I didn't want to get lost. As I drove by the detour road, I looked over and saw the couple had stopped and gotten out of their car. There was nothing but woods all around. It was just getting dark, and that's all I could see. The next morning, as I drove by the same road, I saw the dead end sign just past where the couple had gotten out of their car. Still gives me chills when I drive past it, and it's been 15 years since that happened. Number two, black cat. I was once driving home from my ex-boyfriend's house around 3 a.m. As I was going down the street, I saw what looked like a huge black cat, something the size of a small horse. As I looked at it, it turned toward me and it had a human face. I freaked out and almost ran it off the road. When I looked back, it was gone. Number three, ghost crash. My daughter and I were driving from Wichita Falls, Texas to Oklahoma City on I-44 to catch our plane home to Pennsylvania. It was 4.05 a.m. I remember because I was afraid we'd missed our flight, and the highway was empty. We were almost out of Lawton City limits when we saw an older model car, light blue or silver, launch off the embankment, roll three or four times, and over and over. I could remember exactly that I saw a human flying through the air. I pulled over and called 911 and gave them the GPS coordinates of the overpass. I asked dispatch if I should back down the highway and she told me not to because there was an officer less than two minutes away. Twenty minutes later, I get a call from the police asking exactly where it was. I repeat the info. The officer said that he was sitting at that location, and there was nothing over there. 
Not a skid mark, no broken glass, no flattened grass, nothing at all. When I get home, I googled it. This is what I found out. Exactly 10 years prior, a group of teenagers were speeding down a suburban road when they lost control, flipped over, and went right up over the embankment. All six kids were killed. They were driving a 1986 Oldsmobile, the time of the accident, 4.05 a.m. Number four, wake up. Driving home from work one night, exhausted after working double shifts, I was on the freeway and fell asleep behind the wheel. I heard a woman's voice gently whisper in my ear, wake up, just loud enough to wake me up, but not startle me awake. Woke up just in time to avoid colliding with a bunch of road construction barrels. That was like 20 years ago, and I never forgot that voice. Number 5 Hitchhiker. I hated driving by a graveyard at night on the way home because a male ghost would hop in and sit in the back seat behind me. He looked solid too. I could see him in the rearview mirror. Never told anyone until my nephew told me he hated driving past that graveyard because the ghost of a man would hop in the car and go for a ride. He'd tell him, If you ain't Jesus, get the hell out of my car. Number 6. Mothman I drive a delivery route at night on a 30-foot box truck through different towns out about 30 miles east of Cleveland. The area is naturally creepy. Two-lane asphalt cut through the forest for miles until you get to the next town. Always foggy as hell. Anyway, one night I'm driving down 322 West towards Chesterland, Ohio, when I see a huge figure flying right over me in the moonlight. It was huge. I realized I was about to hit on the windshield and duck down below the dash and right as I did I hear it a loud thud at the front of the box truck right above the cab of the freight line where I'm driving I hit the brakes and come to a stop and think for a few seconds before I step out about if I should actually get out but I do it anyway because I had to see what it was. So I get out and walk around the back of the truck and I see it laying beside the road about 50 yards away. I swear the thing was man sized, but I figured maybe it was a huge hawk or maybe even an eagle that I had killed. So I start to walk up to it, thinking it had been dead. All of a sudden, the thing rolls over, stands up on two legs, jumps, and flies off. It took it a hit about probably 45 miles an hour straight to an aluminum box, and it lived. When it stood up, I swear, it was man-shaped and at least 5'8". Definitely no bird. I don't know what that was. 
When it flew off, I got scared and ran back to the truck and continued the four or five miles to Chesterlin. I stop at a gas station and get out, look up at the front of the box, and there were wing prints six feet across in the dirt and grime, and not like feathery bird-shaped, bat-shaped. If I could describe the looks of it, the closest thing I can come up with is that it looked like the monster from Jeepers Creepers or maybe the Mothman. I'm not making any of this up. It still freaks me out every time I go down that road. Number 7. Ghost Man Coming home from a night shift, driving down a back road, I'd traveled literally thousands of times. On one side of the road, there was a six-foot drop to train tracks. The other side runs vertically up a hillside approximately 25 miles. No guardrails at all. In my headlights, I saw a young man dressed in a white shirt and dark pants suddenly dart out into the road from the hillside stopped in the middle of the road to look at my truck and then sprint to the other side and down over the embankment. I slammed on my brakes, got out with the flashlight from under my seat and ran to the tracks, thinking he had been hurt. Nothing. Absolutely quiet, except the sound of my truck engine. I got home which took all about five minutes in my mind since I was shaking so hard and said something to my dad. He grinned from ear to ear and told me it was probably so-and-so who was killed on that road when my dad was in high school. White t-shirt and jeans was what he was wearing. Whoever hit him in the ditch, on the tracks, and left. Sheriff found him next morning. He does it every once in a while to people driving that road alone late at night. Scared the crap out of you, didn't it? He snickered and nodded. Number 8. Spook Road As a teenager, I was obsessed with Spook Road, where a car full of kids crashed and died. They still had the dash of the car at the site. The roads are fairly long, and we were driving at night about 30 miles an hour. Somehow, we took a 15-minute drive and was capable of listening to an entire album. It was weird, as though time didn't move right. Still baffled at 32 years old. Number 9. People in the Woods I was driving very slow down a supposedly haunted road, where you're supposed to turn your lights on and off under the bridge, and you may see the girl hanging that hung herself there. When I went to do this, a bunch of random people came out of the woods and started banging on my car. I will never go back there again. Number 10. Get back in your car and go. A few years ago, I was leaving my boyfriend's house late at night. I had to stop to get gas before driving home, 
so I pulled into the first open gas station I saw. I started walking into the store when out of nowhere a man runs up to me and yells, get back in your car and go. Something in his panicked expression told me he wasn't messing around and I got the hell out of there fast. The next day, we found the gas station was robbed and the attendant was badly hurt. I had to call the PD to tell them about the guy and to this day, I don't know if he was a good Samaritan or the robber. Number 11. Fog. I was driving home from work about 2 a.m. It was a beautiful night, so I decided to take a route home that was more in the country instead of through town. I had to cross an old bridge that had been there for probably 80 to 100 years. There's no houses or lights except my headlights. Just as my front tires hit the bridge, a red fog rolls in across it. The hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I got across that bridge as fast as possible. After I got across, I looked in my mirror, and the fog is gone, but it looked like somebody was standing in the middle of the bridge. I mentioned it to my parents the next morning, and my dad said he's always heard stories about that bridge, and supposedly a young lady hung herself from it. Number 12. Werewolf. Used to work on Sanibel Island in Florida. I was driving across the causeway to my home on the other side from work around midnight. Went to accelerate because I was over the bridges and a huge dog-like creature walked in front of my car. It looked ragged. It was tall as the hood of my car, really furry with fang-like teeth hanging out the sides of its mouth. It looked at me like I was in the way, then kind of sauntered off toward the beach, scared the hell out of me. Number 13, Alien. My mom and I had a light following for us for 20 miles. It wasn't a helicopter or a plane. It would move side to side and then front to back. The radio went out and then it was gone. We have no idea how to explain what had happened. But we only theorize that it might have been something supernatural. Or maybe even... Maybe... It was aliens. Number 14. Man in the middle of nowhere. I had to pee really bad about midnight. I pulled onto a dirt road out in the BFE, turned headlights off, and did my business and got back in the car. I turned it on, and when I turned the headlights on, I saw a man about 20 feet in front of the car walking toward me. Kind of shook me up a bit, backed up, and got the heck out of there. I don't know who he was, and I don't know what his intentions were, and I don't know if he saw me doing my business. But... Ray and I out in the middle of nowhere. Let's never meet again.
Number 15. Struck by Lightning I was driving home from work in a torrential downpour, merely five minutes from home, and felt a tingling sensation on the back of my neck, and the hair on my head started to rise. Realizing static charge, I braced myself for the inevitable. Lightning struck my car with an intense, blinding light and causing an instantaneous ringing in my ears. The dim lights on my dash glowed brighter than a spotlight due to the sudden electrical charge. The radio shorted out and out blew the actuators in the rear windows causing the windows to retreat into the doors by the time i got home and pulled into the garage there was three inches of standing water in the back seat of my car car ran fine after that tires did a great job grounding it Number 16. Followed. A truck on a dark road with no lights following me. I had just left work at 3 a.m. in the morning, and I was the only car on the road. All I could think about was the movie Jeepers Creepers. I don't know who it was or why it was following me with its lights off, but let's never meet again. And number 17, the people at the cemetery. I live in a small town in South Texas. When I was 19, a boyfriend of mine Myself and two other friends were driving down an old back road towards a cemetery that hadn't been used since the 1800s. It was about 3 a.m. and we pulled up into the cemetery only to see off in the distance four white hooded figures circling a grave in the distance. We didn't stay long enough to investigate. We turned around and left real quick. Thank you for watching the Infiltrator Scary Stories. Um, if you like what you are hearing, make sure that you are subscribed on your favorite podcasting platform. If you're listening to this um, on YouTube, make sure that you smash that subscribe button and you hit that like button. And make sure you have notifications turned on so every time we upload a new video, you will get notified. This has been Season 1, Episode 3 of the Infiltrators Podcast, Scary Stories. If you liked this, um, make sure to go to our website, uh, theinfiltrators.godaddysites.com. That's um, our domain for now until I get the um, actual domain for the website. We got all of our videos on there of urban exploration, our scary stories, true crime stories, and much more, and some exclusive content over there on that website. I'm Zach Halcox, and until next time, I'll see you. And remember that life is an adventure. Thank <laughs> you.